Mount Basavi is so large, it generates its own weather. For much of the night, it's been raining, and the sleeping area is flooding. There's no respite from the mud. And it's tin spaghetti for breakfast, again. Chris and Steve are reviewing Gordon's footage from last night in the hope it's the mystery cuscus they've been looking for. We'll try today. Those big, beautiful eyes. Yeah. The small little ears, they're in the fur. Uh -huh. And light yeah. belly here. Light belly. I reckon that is our cuscus. You think? I reckon it is. I reckon it is. It's dark. So this could be the animal that that this, skull belongs this, this to. This could be the, the mysterious Basavi Cuscus. This, this, this could definitely be. Wow. So what we really need now is to actually catch one of these in our traps. Let's it? see if we can catch it. Then we'll get a feel for the color. We'll see what it really looks like, and we'll see if that really is a good match for the animal's teeth that we've been looking at that are so distinctive. Yeah. Boy, this could be really exciting though. I think this is our I think this is our animal. It looks like a major new discovery. But pictures alone are not scientific proof. To get that, they'll need to catch one in the few days that are left. The Sarbis forests extend right up to the summit. A vertical kilometer above Stephen Gordon. The jungle is much wetter. George is joining the team on the mountain. His mission, to explore the cloud forest clinging to the summit. Being one of the world's leading experts on insects, if there's anything unusual, he'll find it. This volcano is just like, it's like, like an island in the sky. I mean, it's, it's 9,000 feet above the sea level. Look at that wall. God, that is unbelievable. But as you can see, the, the weather is really, it is very cloudy. Amazing how it changes. Incredibly heavy rain, very dark. And there's just there's a, little, there's a little gap in the cloud over there. So it's touch and go whether we'll be able to land there. We're gonna make it. We're clear to land. We're clear to land. Oh, yeah, we're here. Fantastic. This precarious cliff edge will be George's camp for the next couple of days. A thousand meters below him, they're on the lookout for new animals. Top of the list, the unknown Cuscus. They search every hole, every nook, and every cranny. Mate, this place is leech central. By day, squeeze in, and by night, camera traps are set. Leech. Any mammals that come in here, they'll try and get onto them, including humans. Face on their mother could love. The team use every piece of kit available. There's lots of insect noise, some frogs, some weird stuff. I don't know what it is. It's incredible that a frog this tiny size, I mean, it's no bigger than the end of my thumb can make a noise that loud, just puffing itself up like a great big balloon and then squeezing all the air out. But this jungle is so dense and so steep, it's hard to find anything. On the summit, George is out exploring the peculiar mountain moss forest for the first time. He stepped into another world. It's like... Lord of the Rings habitat. You'd expect orcs and elves appearing in a minute. The whole forest is just humid, 100% humidity, all the time. 
and this may look like solid solid ground but it's not if you look i can go through there and beyond i can put my hand if i can go probably i can put my whole arm right through up to the hill and that's just roots and soil and space and that's what we're standing on the whole thing is just a sort of a mirage almost of plants and soil but the soil is really interesting because the soil isn't just here it actually occurs up on the plants as well so it's it's actually aerial soil all of this is just growing on a single thin thin branch it's a huge carpet of moss and soil it's almost like a, a different world and I haven't seen that one before. Absolutely amazing. I mean, decay just brings fungi, bacteria, mosses, I mean, just everything is feeding off what's here. And look at that. that, that is the most exquisite tiny fungus growing on a dwarf bamboo. And it is just incredible. Ooh, look, look. Good God, look at that. I just saw that there on the ground. It's huge. This is a flatworm. Well, that's exactly the sort of animal you'd expect to find in the, this constantly wet environment. Flatworms come in all shapes and sizes. That's the underside. But I have never seen a flatworm this big before. Absolutely amazing. Tiny little head end, this is, that's the, the head end there. This habitat is incredibly special because there are animals and plants here, orchids and insects and other and higher animals you won't find anywhere else in the world, but also because it occupies a very, very small area and with increased global warming, that area will get smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually it'll all be gone. In the crater, one of the trackers has returned to camp with a wild animal, and it's totally trusting. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness, he's absolutely beautiful. Come on, little fella. I think it's our guy. I'm going to look at his mouth in a little bit, and we'll know from his teeth, but this looks right on. This is a dark furred cuscus. It's a montane cuscus. It's very much like the skull I suspected the skull was similar to a different species called the silky cuscus, and, yeah. and the body is too. It's you can feel that silky fur. Yeah, it's really, really thick. I guess this is adapted to living in a, in a, a mountain environment. That's right. That's right. He seems to like you. He's got a very, very strong, but but not actually unpleasant smell. No, but you can, it, it, it does hit you. This is the mammal that Gordon filmed emerging from the tree stump. I'm calling this the wasabi cuscus and because it, I really think it, it has a lot of distinctive features. We're gonna we're gonna find out more as we as we look closer. But I, I just I can't even begin to describe how it feels to have an animal in my hands that is this beautiful and in all probability has never been seen before by science. I think I think what we have is a, a cuscus that long ago has been isolated on this volcano and uh, has just uh, not been able to uh, have any contact with any of its relatives and has become uh, something here in isolation that, uh, that is unique to Basavi. He's totally chilled out. He's got no idea quite how important he is. <laughs> so gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. Little guy. You're a major scientific discovery. How about that? I, I travel the world looking for new species in many different places. And we find them, we find new mammals. It still does happen, but so many of them, most of them, are things like bats and rodents. And to find something, a marsupial, an animal that's, that's this size, uh, is really exciting. It's, it's a cause for a major celebration. Crack open the champagne. <laughs> I know, really, this is cause or for celebration. crack open the bully beef. <laughs> it's, just kind of black, but not black. Yeah. Very it's a brand new subspecies of cuscus, and Basavi is its only home. If these jungles are logged, we'll lose animals like this forever. <laughs>